Richmond's new mayor, Danny Avula, is more than the city's first Indian American mayor. He's a symbol of Richmond's new diversity. Richmond was, when Henry Marsh, its first black mayor, took office in 1977, a majority black city. But much has changed since then. Richmond is no longer majority black. It remains, however, majority minority. Black residents make up about 44% of Richmond's population. That means they remain the city's largest racial minority. But the black population has declined for a number of reasons. They include black poverty. It's moving into the surrounding suburban counties of Henrico and Chesterfield, in part because housing is pricier in the city. Also, the black middle class is shifting from the city to the counties for many of the same reasons white residents left the city. Better schools, lower taxes among them. One measure of the growing racial diversity of the Richmond suburbs, some of Richmond's historic black churches have branches in the counties. One of them used to be led by a former Richmond mayor, Dwight Jones. But back to Richmond. Hispanic and Asian newcomers are very much a feature of Richmond, and their numbers are consequential. Hispanics make up about 11% of the population. Asians, Native Americans, and Pacific Islanders, about 4%. Another 4% are two or more races. Overall, the city is about 60% Black, Hispanic, Asian, about 40% White. The five-candidate race for mayor was really a two-candidate race. There was Avula, a doctor, the state's former COVID czar under a Democratic governor, and a Virginia social services chief under a Republican governor. And there was Michelle Mosby, a former member of city council who'd run for mayor in 2016. She's a businesswoman who owns a hair salon and sells real estate. The Mosby mayoralty also would have been powerfully symbolic. It would have been the first time a woman and a woman of color would have been elected mayor by popular vote. In many respects, the choice between Avula and Mosby, who ran a distant second to the mayor-elect, was New Richmond versus Old Richmond. Mosby represents Old Richmond in that she was backed by most of the city's black political establishment. That's the network of black elective officials, black community leaders, black pastors, black business people that would turn out the black vote that for nearly 50 years was key to black political control of municipal government. Avula represents New Richmond. He's a product of a different multi-hued coalition. It includes black residents, among them Henry Marsh, the past backing the future, but also Asians, Hispanics, and whites. And many of Avula's supporters are younger, with little or no memory of the bitterness between black and white Richmond that long shaped city politics. Running and governing are very different exercises. Running gets you into office, governing can keep you there. The breadth of the Avula victory, he pulled nearly 50% of the vote against his four opponents, suggests optimism about and confidence in the city's new mayor, and that perhaps Avula can do something about a balky bureaucracy, seemingly wasteful spending, and struggling schools. But if we've learned anything about Richmond's mayoralty since the return to a popularly elected mayor 20 years ago, it's that it's a tough job that can chew up those who've held it. Doug Wilder, having led the push for direct election was seen as a my way or the highway bully who tried to scare common sense into City Hall. Dwight Jones was the opposite. He was so low profile, it was sometimes difficult to know who was in charge. Lamar Stoney, who will be succeeded by Avula, was keen on bright, shiny objects, a casino and a downtown redevelopment plan. Both ideas went nowhere. Still, Stoney believes his eight years in City Hall can get him to the state capitol, first as lieutenant governor, and then maybe as governor. Now it's Avula's turn to show that he can get the job done without the mayoralty doing a job on him. For the Richmond Times-Dispatch, this is Jeff Shapiro.